Hello to all. We are here at Indiana University South Bend. It's a pleasure to see you and to greet you. I am Connie Peterson Miller Constance. So when you receive emails from me, they're signed Constance Peterson Miller, but people call me Connie. And I am director for admissions as well as for international student services here at IU South Bend. We are very fortunate to have uh, students that come from around the world, indeed professors and staff members that have been raised in other cultures, speak other languages. So it's a privilege to serve in those dual roles. And I'm here with an admissions counselor. I'll let him introduce himself. Thank you, Connie. Uh, my name is Ali. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor here uh, with IU South Bend. I've been here for a little over a year and a half. Uh, serving students, uh, mainly first year students uh, in the admissions capacity. Uh, I come in and identify as a multicultural individual, as Connie has mentioned, uh, like many of those individuals who serve on this campus. Uh, I'll be doing the admissions session of this presentation. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in. All right, so we'll begin. This is what we propose, is that we'll introduce you to uh, what we think are some of the best reasons a person might choose to join us here at IU South Bend. And then we would like to launch a short uh, tour, a virtual tour naturally, but please know that you are welcome to look at our visit pages and make uh, a time to come and tour the campus in person. And uh, then, Mr. Mohammed, Ali Mohammed, is going to help you understand the admissions process, which this year features something new, and that's our test optional, our test optional, that is, uh, admissions criteria for first year students. So let's begin. I, I do want to remind you that here we are, a regional campus, um, but we are part of a larger uh, enterprise we are Indiana University. It just happens that we're here to represent and deliver a quality, a high quality education on behalf of Indiana University, but here in the community. Do you mind to flip to the next slide, Ali? Um, just, I'll, I'll remind you of that again, is that when you graduate from IU South Bend, you graduate with an IU degree. and as as a person who works with international students, I can tell you that indeed it is recognized throughout the world. However, we are a fairly small campus. We're about 5,000 now, and that includes undergraduates and graduates. As I mentioned, it includes those who come from maybe just around the corner or across the street, as well as those who come from as far, far field as uh, Malaysia, China, from uh, the many countries in, in Africa. Um, again, we, we count that as an extraordinary benefit, but because it's a fairly small campus, um, it's not a place where you have to get on a bus to go to the next class. We think we can provide you with uh, personal attention. We can get to know you. People, people do, they, they know your name. They, they, they learn about you we hope you can learn about us and we walk together. This is a journey, education is a journey. But even though it's small, you, uh, you can experience a full collegiate life here. We do have housing. So there are about 400 students that choose to live on campus. These are unmarried students. We do offer inter intramural athletics as well as a number of varsity athletics for uh, both men and women. Uh, it includes everything from softball and basketball to golf, tennis, and so forth, cross-country running, um, which, is a nice, which is a nice sport to take up these days. Lots of clubs, 70, sometimes ranging up to hundreds of clubs. And if you don't find what you like, you can, you can create your own. So it's an opportunity to, to meet and socialize, even in these times when we're zooming in to connect with one another, you know, clubs are a great resource. And uh, remember that you learn inside and outside the classroom 
when you're part of a college community. And of course, extraordinary opportunities to perform research. That's not just in the science lab, but out in the community. We have those who look at the materials uh, with which our environment was built here in the community. We have people that are out in um, our sustainability gardens. We have those who uh, go to Europe, who go to Asia and across the United States for form research. And there are those that stay right here at home and can benefit from grants and scholarships to support that research and lots of opportunities to connect with the community. That's what we think that's important and vital to the life of this university. You saw that bridge at the beginning. That's a bridge that connects us to the community. We hope it'll connect you to um, a life of learning when you cross over that bridge and that you'll take that same bridge back out to the community holding your diploma. Um, a few more reasons and then, then we'll take a tour. So, you know, we, we're particularly um, pleased to offer this education at a low price. I think if you'll compare, uh, and, and of course, every college seeks to offer value for its tuition, uh, but we are a public institution. We offer a great many scholarships to those who have high merit academically, as well as to those who are involved in the community one way or another, or who have special talents uh, musically, athletically, and so forth. So we invite you to explore on our scholarship pages. Um, and then of course, we help students uh, file the FAFSA and benefit from uh, the state and federal funds that are invested in all students. And if you're a 21st century scholar, we have a special coordinator who will help you stay on track. You know that it's important to stay on track while you're in high school. And of course, you, you have a checklist of items um, that you have to meet every year in order to secure your scholarship from year to year. And it's worth, it's worth the trip to be a 21st century scholar. It's a safe community. It's right in the heart of the city in some ways. It's just, you know, it's just to one side of the river. The river actually runs through it. I shouldn't say it's to one side or the other. The river literally runs through our campus. But um, if you know IU South Bend, you know that it's a, a short remove from the downtown, not too far from most of anything in the community. And that because people do get to know each other, we feel a sense of safety and we're devoted to it. We're devoted to ensuring that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, that you can count on being able to learn and live in a place that honors you and wants to see to your welfare, that wants to keep you safe. So you can, so you can uh, be relaxed knowing that um, it's a place where you could concentrate yourself on other things besides just trying to stay safe. We have more than, really we say between 100 and 200 majors. And remember that on the one hand, if you make up your mind, you're likely to move, you know, kind of as a straight line through college, but that college is a time to explore. You wanna take some time, especially in your first year, you may have come to college with an idea of what you want to study, but we introduce you through what we call our general education uh, core to uh, a number of disciplines. So you're going to range through these fields of disciplines. You're going to learn how connected they are, but you're also, we think, going to find um, the best fit. And of course, we have other uh, offices and departments that help you explore majors, um, that help you look at what kind of career trajectory you can expect as well. Um, and I would be, I, well, we have great staff, but really, it's the faculty, that's who you're going to see in the main, and they are exceptional. They, uh, they win the most awards <laughs> uh, that we offer here at IU as an enterprise. We've been honored by that. And they support students who go on to do extraordinary things, who go on to graduate school, who go on to Stanford, who go on to Notre Dame who um, go on to work for Microsoft, who go on to work for local companies that do extraordinary work, especially in sustainability, 
um, and research. So all those things are here. And lastly, I just want to mention that we are an institution that offers a variety of resources. Um, you may not realize what you need until you get here. Um, and we, we're anticipating those needs and working to provide them for you. And that includes helping you stay healthy, both um, through counseling and uh, meeting your medical needs, but also helping you, as I said, plan for a career, um, sort out details. We have something called the Tight Success Center. That's where you go when you have something you need to accomplish, you, a task has been set, a problem needs to be solved. You may not know where you need to start. The Titan Success Center can get you uh, down the road and they're there to help you until you get the resolution or the answer you need. And there are those that are here to help you make the connections that will enrich your lives, not only with the things that you're learning in the classroom, but again, will help you find a way to um, put your hands into the community and lift up your, your neighbor and, and use the things that you're learning in ways that are meaningful to you and that you feel um, help you understand where to put your feet down as you make your way forward in life. So at this point then, um, we'd like to offer you a virtual tour of the campus. Now, again, I wanna remind you, this is just a sampler and uh, you are most welcome to join us here on campus as well. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we offer it in the Spanish language and uh, about every other Saturday, we can meet you here on campus. But let, let, let's look at what, what might be here uh, on offer. Here. Location beside the St. Joseph River was established in 1961, and we are now the third largest IU campus, enrolling more than 5,500 students each year from around the region and the globe. With more than 100 different undergraduate majors and 15 graduate programs, there is something here for everyone. Our student to faculty ratio of 14 to 1 means that we're a close-knit community, but with all of the resources and support of a world-class IU education. Let's begin. And don't forget, go Titans! The administration building stands on the site of the former South Bend Watch Company. It's the home of the Office of Admissions, the first stop for new students seeking an IU degree. Other important resources here include the Career Services Office, the Office of International Student Services and International Programs, the Registrar, the Student Counseling Center, the Titan Success Center, and of course, the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships. Did you know that IU South Bend students qualify for more than $43 million of financial aid each year? If you need assistance, the Gateway Information Desk is here to answer your questions and point you in the right direction. The second floor of the administration building is home to the Judd Layton School of Business and Economics. Choose from one of our 10 undergraduate business majors and be mentored by faculty who are not only outstanding researchers in their fields, but also passionate, caring educators preparing you to excel in today's fast-paced, dynamic business environment. The Titan Success Center helps to support students as they settle into college life. Titan success coaches can assist students in navigating academic challenges like course registration, schedule changes, or switching majors and connect them to campus and community resources. Connected to the administration building is the university center. Here, students can hang out, study, or enjoy a hot meal, sandwiches, and more at the university grill between classes. As you head outside, you enter the campus's main quad. In the fall, the quad is home to Welcome Week where our nearly 100 clubs and organizations come together to welcome students back to campus for the new academic year. The Education and Arts Building was completed in April of 2013 and earned a LEED certification from the U.S. Green Building Council. The 
lobby of the Education and Arts Building is a popular spot for gathering or grabbing a cup of coffee at the cafe. It is home to the School of Education, which trains more than 400 undergraduate and 140 graduate students to be tomorrow's educators and counselors. The Rackland School of the Arts offers a superb art education at our campus's affordable tuition price. Students can choose to study fine arts, music, theater and dance, communication studies, new media, or art education, and are taught by award-winning faculty from around the world. Also in the Education and Arts Building, you can find the Vera Z. Dwyer College of Health Sciences Dental Hygiene Clinic, which is open to the public and provides preventative dental services from September until June. All services are provided by upperclassmen completing the dental hygiene program who are overseen by licensed dentists and registered dental hygienists. Our art gallery on the first floor features student and faculty work as well as traveling exhibits. The Education and Arts Building also offers many popular study spots full of natural light and great views of campus. Our next stop is the Franklin D. Schurz Library. It is part of the IU Library System, one of the largest in the world. In addition to interlibrary loan services and access to IU's vast digital collection, IU South Bend students receive a guest library card for the University of Notre Dame Libraries. Inside, the Hamas Media Commons provides technology resources to students and faculty, including a one-button studio for recording videos and podcasts. The Schurz Library is a perfect place to work and study, offering computer labs, group study rooms, and a dedicated quiet floor. Excellent resources open to all students include the Writer's Room and ACE Tutoring Centers, and are located on the fourth floor for drop-in, one-on-one assistance. Across Northside Boulevard, Farrah Z. Dwyer Hall is home to the Health and Wellness Center. Services include primary and preventative care, as well as referrals to specialists. HealthLink, which is a community health center, shares this building and is open to students and community members. Nearby, spanning the banks of the St. Joseph River, is our most recognizable campus landmark, the IU South Bend Bridge. Built in 2006, the 600-foot pedestrian bridge connects river crossing campus housing, which sits south of the river, to the main campus. River Crossing campus residences were built in 2008 and offer fully furnished apartments ranging in size from one to four bedrooms with full kitchens, Wi-Fi, and cable television. Residents have their own rooms with independent locks and a shared kitchen and living room. Our community building sits at the head of the residential buildings quad. It offers a laundry room and mailboxes for residents, a large event space, study areas, games, and a computer lounge. Back across the river, Northside Hall, the first and largest building on campus, is home to many academic programs, such as mathematics, physics, computer science, social work, and health professions, such as sports and exercise sciences, clinical lab studies, nursing, and radiography. Inside, you'll find the campus bookstore, where students can buy or rent textbooks and ebooks, or purchase IU clothing and supplies. Northside Hall is also home to the Louise E. Atticott and the Atish Joshi Performance Hall. Built in spring 2014, the 224-seat venue with state-of-the-art acoustics features performances from soloists and small ensembles from around the world. Students and faculty present exciting dance and theater productions and host prominent performing artists throughout the year. Students can attend these performances for free with their Crimson Card student ID. Sculptor Dora Nutella, a professor in the Rackland School of the Arts, recently unveiled her work, Eterpe's Gift, outside Northside Hall facing the quad. The Student Activity Center, SAC for short, is a 100,000 square foot facility and is the hub for athletics and student life on campus. The SAC is home to our varsity men's and women's basketball teams, cross country, tennis, golf, men's baseball, women's volleyball, women's soccer, and softball. The SAC offers a gym with weight and cardio equipment on two floors. IU South Bend students can access these facilities for free with their Crimson Card student ID. A 1 8 mile, three lane track spans the course of the SAC. Titan basketball and volleyball teams play their games on the main court. 
Two additional basketball courts and three racquetball courts are available for students and SAC members. And right next to the intramural courts, students can relax in the game area with billiards, ping pong, and more. The Office of Student Life also calls the SAC home, with dedicated meeting spaces for Student Government Association and the student newspaper, The Preface. Our last stop along the main quad is Wycamp Hall. This building, which sits on the site of the former Coca-Cola bottling plant, features classrooms and faculty offices. There are five computer labs, a large lecture hall, multiple student lounges, and the Language Resource Center. YCAMP is also where you'll find offices for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences programs like History, Psychology, English, General Studies, World Languages, and more. There is more to IU South Bend than just the main campus. Dedicated in 2007, the Elkhart Center offers general education courses and professional development taught by IU South Bend faculty in its convenient downtown Elkhart location. The Elkhart Center has 13 classrooms, including a student lounge, technology center, clinical assessment lab, and science lab. Graduate nursing classes began being taught here in 2018, and the university plans to offer graduate degrees in speech language pathology and occupational therapy here in the future. Back in South Bend, the Civil Rights Heritage Center is housed in the former Engman Public Natatorium, a once segregated public swimming pool. As an extension of the IE South Bend campus, the center functions as a living museum that preserves and honors past civil rights struggles in Northern Indiana while supporting contemporary efforts to fight for justice. The Civil Rights Heritage Center operates as a space for the university to meet and learn and hosts a wide range of educational and cultural programming. This includes regular speakers, books and film discussions, poetry and spoken word events, and student and community Thanks for taking a tour of campus with us. If you have questions or would like more information about applying to IE South Bend and joining the Titan family, please visit admissions.iusb.edu to reach out to the Office of Admissions. We can't wait to hear from you. All right, so we've had a whirlwind tour. Now, um, I am going to step aside for a moment. I did want to remind you that if you have questions, especially about anything that you've heard or seen, or uh, which my colleague Ali Mohammed is going to introduce to you, will you please uh, enter those into, I think it's the question and answer box. You should see that toward the bottom of the screen. So if you'll add those there, we'll be very happy to answer those questions. So again, I'm going to go um, into uh, a sleep mode here. And uh, Ali, I turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Kassan. Um Again, uh, I will reiterate um, that we do have the uh, box here for the Q&A section. Um, at any time, just feel free to type in any questions uh, throughout this presentation. And I will be kind of looking at those periodically here and we'll answer questions uh, as we go. And I, I will hope that we have some time at toward the end there to answer any questions. Um, I'm just kind of going to kind of take it from here at this point. Uh, again, my name is Ali. I'm going to talk to you here about uh, several things here uh, to just get started. It's just the first thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to talk about what you, if you're a ninth grader or a 10th grader right now, what do you need to in order to prepare for attending higher education? And if you are, a, you know, a junior or a senior and in the process of applying to college, what do you need to do in order to apply right now? And then we'll finish it up with kind of, you know, a few facts about scholarship and financial aid at IU South Bank campus. All right, so let's let's kind of get started and take it from here. Um, so some of the things that, you know, Connie also covered early on here in the presentation is that, you know, like a lot of students do kind of do different things in terms of like their preparation, that sort of thing. So early on, really what we advise students to do is that focusing on their academics in terms of taking, you know, dual credit enrollment classes, you know, taking AP advanced uh, placement uh, courses, that sort of thing, uh, you know, IB classes, certainly that sort of thing to prepare their, themselves academically uh, in order to kind of just be successful in a, in a post, you know, um, kind of secondary education in a higher education, that sort of thing. 
uh, you know, we still kind of recommend students uh, to take the SATs, ACTs uh, more than once, preferably starting in your junior year. And then, you know, second time will be in your senior year when you're kind of starting to apply to colleges, that sort of thing. Uh, there are different things that we do recommend students to obviously, obviously come and visit us, see us, you know. But as you, you saw early on here, we presented, uh, you know, our virtual tour. So you're able to visit our campus. Uh, through virtually and in person as well. So take advantage of those, you know, opportunities and come and see us. You know, we like to see students and, you know, families coming to our campus. Uh, and lastly, just, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, for students, we always ask students to do a lot of research uh, in terms of, you know, the different campuses that you're interested in. And certainly our campus is a campus that there is a lot of resources that stu students who do their research, they get to learn a lot about, you um, the top reasons why students, you know, pick our campus and in our community in in particular here for what it have to offer. So uh, again, just kind of just kind of reiterating some of these points that from early on that you know uh, were covered. Uh, next, I'm just going to kind of talk and dive in a little bit into our the degree programs that we do have offer. We do offer. Uh, we have diff six different schools here that we offer. You know, the first school is Ecker uh, Ernestine Rackling School of the Arts. So essentially, this is for students who are in particular interested in music, interested in theater, you know, interested in dance, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of students are able to pick that as a major. You know, again, it's over 100 uh, degrees uh, and programs that students are, are able to kind of pick and offer and major from and study in these different six different schools. Second school is, you know, the School of Business, which offers, uh, you know, a great deal of uh, majors, you know, just an example of few is accounting. Students are able to, uh, you know, in, like major in accounting, business, uh, economics, uh, you know, management, really different kind of areas. Uh, which brings us to the next one is the School of Education is the school where students are able to pick different range of majors. You know, these are the early educators, you know, early education, you know, you know, earlyhood education, uh, secondary education, that sort of thing. So a lot of teachers uh, at the School of Education, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, the next one will be the College of Liberal Arts, which covers an, an array of majors and degrees. Just a few examples, again, again, to name few are, you know, the pre-professional tracks, you know, we have the students who are interested in going to medical school, uh, for example, the pre, uh, you know, pre-medicine, -med, pre uh, pre-dentistry, that sort of thing, or the biology, uh, you know, chemistry, history, uh, a lot of those degrees are embedded within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, you know, to name few again. Uh, the very these wire College of Health Sciences offers a number of programs, one of which uh, are like the popular nursing program on campus that we do have here on campus, as well as dental hygiene uh, program, uh, and then radiography program and other, other health sciences related programs that are embedded within the College of uh, Health Science. Uh, and the last one is really like kind of intuitive, uh, is self-explanatory in a sense, is that the, our School of uh, Social Work, uh, it covers a number of uh, programs and, uh, you know, the programs in social work related, that is, you know. Um, going to just shift our focus a little bit from academics here to just uh, standard and admission practice uh, in terms of if you are a student right now, a, a, you know, a senior in high school, what do you need to know in order to kind of complete your admissions process? Well, uh, there are several things that we do look for. Uh, we look for a completed application, which you're able to access online on our website, or you are able to come to our office and, you know, grab an admissions, uh, you know, application and fill it out. Uh, that, that is completed. Next thing, we require students to submit their credentials, meaning their uh, transcripts, you know, any kind of related, you know, uh, you know, GED, that sort of thing. Uh, that is, they have completed uh, in order to be processed and considered for ad admissions. Now, the third one is like the completing the ACT or ACT. Now, uh, as uh, Connie mentioned that early on, that it is we have moved to test optional recently. So what does this mean is that students do have the choice in the application process to opt in or opt out of the test requirements. 
Uh, simply opting in, that means we, you know, we will look at consider your, you know, um, test scores. That means we will ask you for a test score. You're, you're able to report that uh, score to us if you know your score. Uh, if you do not, you know, you're able to send us the scores once they're available. Opting out simply, that means you're just telling us you would you do not want to uh, or you do not wish to include that uh, test uh, scores with your application. Uh, simply, you're able to dictate that. Now, if you have taken any dual credits, as we kind of mentioned early on, there is a lot of students that do take uh, dual credits. We tend to ask, ask for those uh, dual credits because it is necessary to receive that, you know, uh, college credit once you're in uh, attending college, that sort of thing, to receive that college uh, credit that you have taken throughout your high school, that sort of thing. So we do need that transcript. Uh, we also do need those uh, credits or, you know, um, this course to be sent to us from the AP or IB exams. Uh, students are able to access this course uh, through their college uh, board account and then send them directly to us. So we generally speaking accept a three or higher on most of the uh, AP exam uh, scores and then you, you know our credential analysts will then go in the system and award those kind of credits uh, you know um, you know according to that you know that sort of thing. Uh, so that's kind of like the basics of our admissions practice. Uh, again, just to kind of keep moving forward, if anyone have any questions at some, any point, you know, just feel free to drop those questions in our Q&A box and we'll be able to answer those as we go here. Uh, next year, next year is really is just something that we wanted to reiterate here is that, you know, our academics at a glance, you know, uh, recently as in given, you know, everything that is happening, IU has been moving you know, faster than ever to adapt, you know, at offering a hybrid model for classes, that sort of thing for students, meaning that, you know, in person and online, you know, given the, the current uh, COVID uh, pandemic situation that our students have like that option, which offers a flexibility and a great deal of just uh, some peace of mind to a, some extent, you know, being able to, uh, you know, complete, you know, some of the coursework online or, or in person, that sort of thing. So give you a good range of uh, kind of education. Uh, these are some of the points just kind of reiterating really to what was covered early on in terms of our small student ratio of 14 to one, uh, you know, dual credits, uh, the different programs that we do have, we do offer here, which is a tremendous uh, program that we do have uh, here is that our honors program that, you know, helps students uh, kind of, you know, you know, make a great connection on campus and just be able to uh, generate different, you know, accomplishments on campus, as well as being able to uh, generate just scholarships and merit and just being successful in, in a range of areas. Um, our academic center for excellence, as it was covered early on, you know, just helps with a great deal of um, just navigating and fostering that, you know, excellence, uh, you know, kind of mission that the Indiana University in general just kind of carries on. Uh, and lastly, just kind of our study abroad programs and, you know, uh, the, the range of places that students are able to kind of access and study, um, you know, across the globe, that sort of thing. Uh, these are some of the like offices that some of them were mentioned indeed in our kind of presentation briefly. So I won't dive in as much and talk about the different offices. I will reiterate, however, in just a couple that I, did, I don't believe they were mentioned. Uh, the Office of Veteran Student Services. This, this is an, a special office that serves students who are identify as vets or students who are coming from, you know, veteran families, that sort of thing. So there is a lot of resources in terms of what they, you know, they offer students in terms of just understanding uh, what kind of resources are available for students out there uh, in terms of just networking opportunities and just, you know, understanding uh, a lot of things with that, that comes in with that process, that sort of thing. Uh, again, there is a range of offices that were covered. I'm not going to kind of jump in all of those, but just wanted to reiterate those kind of uh, programs. This is something just briefly that we do offer, you know, under obviously different kind of circumstances. Uh, every year, IU South Bend participate in a number of like, you know, study abroad trips. Uh, as you can see, all across the globe, you know, different places fostering different learning about different cultures, different sustainable communities. Uh, the really and uh, faculty that lead this mission, as you know, mentioned earlier on, as, as our excellent faculty that you know reach uh, and have won many awards or have developed uh, much you know kind of research emphasis and culture, whether it's culture given health uh, related activities, 
what is sustainability activities, that sort of thing. Uh, these are just some of the countries that to name few here that were uh, kind of completing study abroad courses, that sort of thing. All right, so this is the one that I really uh, want to kind of talk a little bit about here is that our financial aid and scholarships. Now here at IU South Bend, we do offer like, you know, institutional kind of aid in, in a form of merit-based scholarships. This scholarship comes in in an IU or Titan scholarship kind of brand. Uh, we have several scholarships that we cover to name just a few. Uh, we have our Titan Excellence uh, Awards. Uh, we, these are like, uh, you know, a, a scholarship that is essentially $24,000 in value that is offered to students who are uh, strong achievers uh, with a really selective uh, GPA, that sort of thing. Uh, we have other scholarships that are, you know, tied in gold, tied in silver. Uh, award as well as on-site admission scholarship that are th these are just specific scholarship that we award for student based on their merit as well as like you know obviously there are scholarship that they're able to kind of uh, you know select or obtain through uh, our application process and I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second uh, but what I wanted to cover is that in this presentation hopefully a lot of you by now have heard or know what's FAFSA uh, you know the uh, free federal student aid kind of uh, you know application that students are able to uh, fill out each year it's starting on October 1st which have started now for I believe over a little over a couple of weeks now uh, students are able to utilize FAFSA to help them just kind of fund their higher education uh, and that in a, in a form of grants, scholarships, and, you know, if needed, student loans as well. Now, the students each year, once they complete the FAFSA, they're able to obtain uh, an EFC, expected family contribution, which then will help them kind of understand, you know, the type of aid they're able to receive, that sort of thing. Uh, so I do advise and recommend students to complete their FAFSA as early as possible. Uh, so the application currently have started. Uh, today is you know, October 21st. So it's been to about three weeks now, actually, uh, since the, the start of FAFSA. So I always kind of uh, try to remind students as a counselor here that, you know, get started working on that FAFSA. If you have any question, reach out to us or reach out to our certainly our financial aid office uh, with questions, that sort of thing. Um, you're able to utilize the, those funds to obviously study abroad, to do uh, really different things, you know, with, with those kind of scholarship that we do have to offer here on campus. Uh, in the bottom here, if you can see, you know, these are kind of our scholarship application deadline. One of them, you know, October 1st through March 1st uh, is kind of where uh, our applications kind of range in with what we want to see those applications kind of rolling in for some of those scholarships. Um, the one big one that I would talk about is that FAFSA does open up on October 1st. Uh, I believe there is a correction to be made here. It's April 15th for this year. Uh, that would be kind of like the deadline for when you need to file on. Uh, I always tell students that complete that early on. Don't wait until the last second, uh, last second to complete that application because you know sometimes if there is a correction that you need to make or there is uh, something that is you know not correct with your FAFSA, you do have that time to go back and fix it. Uh, if you are working the last second, that you may not have that kind of option. So get started and kind of on that process as soon as possible. Um, really, lastly, just uh, kind of you know giving you this kind of range of Titan lives. Uh, just a little bit of emphasis, not too much about our Titan life since it was covered a little bit in our. A uh, nice uh, kind of virtual tour. Uh, we do offer over 100 clubs and organizations on campus, different you know, um, you know, fraternities, you know, that sort of thing on campus. Really, range of things that we do offer. Uh, again, it's over 13 uh, varsity sports uh, that we do have for students able to kind of utilize on campus. Uh, and lastly, I just wanted to just kind of take the time now to offer my kind of final remarks here. Uh, I hope you did kind of learn a little bit about our campus, as well as our, everything that we do have to offer, uh, as well as that hope in my hopes that you consider Indiana University South Bend as part of just your kind of uh, pursuit of higher education and just give us the chance to kind of, you know, really show you what we have to offer in terms of education, that sort of thing. Um, and I'll just kind of finish here if we have any questions. Uh, with these slides here, these are my very lovely colleagues who work tirely, tirelessly uh, in just kind of supporting our Office of Admissions and answering any questions that you have. 
and you know do a really nice job even if you, we don't know the answer to a question we make sure that we find somebody that able to kind of uh, you know give you that answer uh, that sort of thing so there is a great deal of individuals that work tirelessly to make this kind of process happen uh, i'm going to uh, kind of pause here for any questions concerns i'm going to be checking here our q a box to see uh, if we have received any questions but in the meantime if you do please feel free to kind of ask away at this time. Just uh, one, one clarification on test optional. We did want to remind you that um, when it comes to uh, deciding whether to include a test score, you can self-report it and you can even circle back to self-report it. So You'll be asked at time of application whether you've taken the exam and whether you would like to report the score, you can do that. And then of course, if you were admitted, we'd ask you to follow up with uh, submitting the score directly from the, the testing agency or from your guidance counselor. Um, but even if you decide that you want to enter the score, but you, you, you don't remember it, or you plan to take that test again, maybe get a different score, uh, you can circle back to our website. There's a test optional form and you can report that in again. Don't let test scores or uh, the need or the want of those be an impediment. We can make a decision for you uh, on your uh, curriculum and the grades that you've earned and um, with a review of some of the other coursework or um, supporting experiences that you've had. So again, don't let that be, don't let that hold you back, a test score that is. Uh, and also I did want to remind, we've got just a few moments left, that this Sunday is College Goal Sunday. So if you go to, um, let me see if I can remember this now, if you go to the website College Goal Sunday, that's all one word, collegegoalsunday.org, you'll be able to uh, prepare for and then uh, join uh, your, your classmates and some of our colleagues across the state uh, to get assistance in preparing the FAFSA. We, we, we would be remiss to do that. And also uh, a, last, a last reminder to keep deadlines in mind. Always important to keep deadlines in mind. Uh, so the hope is that those who are highly qualified uh, for merit scholarships are getting their, their uh, applications in by at least December 1st to be considered for um, most of our scholarships. But in fact, you have till March 1st usually to be admitted uh, before we, we uh, need to, to reconsider how to distribute our scholarships. So keep in mind March 1st, try and get admitted by March 1st in order to benefit from the, the uh, wide range of scholarships available. All right, I think that's it. We come uh, to the end of our time, unless you have another question there, Ali? Um, I don't see questions, uh, but we do have one minute. So if anyone ha does have a question, this is the time. All right. All well. Right. If no questions now, under, understand please that we are here for you. Um, give us a call, email, text, stop in. We are open. Our offices are open to the public, uh, eight to five, Monday through Friday. And, and again, we have tour experiences on the weekend as well. So um, do whatever makes you most comfortable, but know that you're welcome uh, to join us in any way that works for you best. And again, it's been our pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you.